that he explains the passage. He, he explains that this can refer to both a person cursing his father and his mother, as well as individually cursing either the father or the mother. So what will we use the, the, the extra phraseology only the emo kilil, which seems to be an extra phraseology of father and mother cursing? He already mentioned in the first part of the passage. So uh, uh, Rashi explains. Wait, wait. But only the evil Kilel, the Sefer, and the last phrase, his father and his mother, that's in the last part of the, that passage, in chapter 10, what does he do at Dorsh? Rabbi Yosha will learn, learn what is it necessary for. The common later on, in the Gemara, in the Elohim Chokim, in the chapter, Elohim Chan Chokim, what is that in the group to let us know additional news? The Rasa, of a person who curses their parents after they're dead. They are still guilty. That's what you're... You he says the extra phraseology, yeah. that's from the Sefer, uh, the end of the passage of Ki'i, uh, is necessary to let us know the news that it's prohibited to curse the, uh, the parents after their death. Yeah. Oh. So according to Rashi, Rabbi Yonason will learn the extra phraseology of the Imo Kilel referring to prohibition, prohibiting to cursing the parents after their death. Just like you remember we learned in the Gemara and Kedushin that you're out of your parents even after their death? Yeah. So yeah. it's also prohibited to curse them after their oh, death. Although I don't know what can be accomplished with a curse after a person's death. Still disrespect. But uh, <laughs> a curse while they're... Oh, oh, what, what, does it? what what damages are done by a curse? Uh, okay. Yeah. This this prince, his parents died. Okay. Yeah. But instead of leaving the kingdom to him, they left it to his his uncle. Okay. So he wants the throne because he thinks he deserves it. He's sure. The Their son. Of, yeah. Okay? So he cursed the parents. They they, they were dust. Where they said the uncle was doing it, and they're supposed to really buy it. I see. So it could so occur. It you had an observation? Or no. Well, but what damage? damage? He's not I mean, saying damage. I'm asking what damage yeah, can be I done with it. The of the name of God is so the Jewish, that's the biggest damage that, in the world. Right. So then couldn't we say if you're going to say tangible damage, are we talking about what kind Here's of damage you need? Damage a person's reputation. That's what I'm talking about. He could, God forbid, because of people will, uh, will cause other people to curse him, other people. That, and that's that, while they're, they're living in this world. They curse a person when they curse someone who's alive, too. So what? So we can still have pretty much the same damage. There is a, you could, a person who worked all his life to build up a good reputation, and in the end, you find a uh, high emotion. He can't say anything. Oh, me. Okay, fine. Oh, he cannot. Let's belabor. So I see. He okay. can't defend himself. That's right. So therefore, that makes things. it. All right, says what line? Where are we? The skilo. He shall certainly be put to death with stoning. He will certainly be put to death with stoning. He the, can't find the place. That's right. Here, here, give it to me. After the no, she knows. I'm looking down here. Look at more. It reads the next portion. It says he certainly be put to death with skilo. Skilo with stoning. So the Gemara says, how can you, where did you get this news? It's got to be with stoning. Yeah. It says here, he, I share you, should yeah. put to death. All people, and no word does it say about Skilo here. Yeah, the how do you come around and you mention the death penalty? All right, we know he's got to be put to death. But well, why do you think the most hideous way of dying by Skilo, which according to Chazal, is the most horrible way of dying? by stoning. The Gemara says, the Gemara asks the question, the immediately challenges us. I told Omer Veskilo, you say they should be stoned to death? Or why do you just hop to the most hideous way yeah, of yeah. dying? Well, the title to die by Eric or Strafe or Strafe or, 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 or I mean strangulation yeah. or burning or, or a decapitation with a sword. I see. Why do you assume that it has to be yeah. So now the Gemara says, Namar Khan, it says here in this passage, Domom Bo, these extra words. His blood is upon him. Yeah. And Namar Lahalon, and it's mentioned there, words that mentioned there, we have to find the posse. 
Where is it? Uh, must be the next the man. after. Wait, let's go find the last member now. Let's go. Oh, let's look in the last post in Vayikro. Let's post it in the period. Uh, yes. Uh, page what's 57. Up? This is the passage we referred to earlier. He have old, which there will be among them an old that's one that uh, consults the dead. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh ye Oni, ye Doni is another that deals with some kind of a, uh, a witchcraft, or some kind of a cause of the dead. Yeah. Moshu, Musu, they should put the dead for heaven with stone. Yigmu, Osam, you shall stone them, you shall stone them. The man bomb, the same fragility, the man bomb, their, their blood is upon them. Yeah. So he learns out yeah. about both. His blood is upon him. Uh -huh. And it's mentioned there in that passage, the man bomb, their blood is upon them. Malon, just like over there, with Skilo, it refers to death penalty by stoning. stoning. Also here is referring to stoning. Onish Shamanu, we have now heard the penalty. As Horam, how do we know that you are also re required to warn ahead of time? Not only did you, 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 the penalty could come to a death penalty by stoning, but also that you are required to warn them before they commit this particular... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it doesn't say anything about warning in the film. Oh, we have to look. Here you become go. acquainted with... Uh, oh, okay. It's too far. It's about page 55 or 6. Say, John, 56 or 5. Okay, just a second. Where it's saying... Okay. You should not curse Elohim. What I got right in 53. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's right at the beginning of the V. Yeah. Wait, let me find it. And I see. Elohim. We're over here. Elohim. 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 Yeah. yeah. First we catch the okay. chapter, okay. then okay. we. Verse 22. Uh, verse, uh, I mean, chapter 22, verse 27. Now the terminology Elohim can refer to either God or to refer to the rabbinical tribunal, the judge. For law not, you cannot curse the rabbinical tribunal. <laughs> and a ruler among your people, you should not curse. That means a leader. Now let's go here. So, as Horominine, how are, back to the Gomorrah. As Horobinai, we've already as explained uh, that others, as, as Horobinai, how do we know that you also are warned against mm -hmm. cursing? Yeah. Tom and Lola, we learned in the passage. Yeah. El, uh, Elohim, you should not curse. And Nosiva Avachol Osor, and a, a, a leader among your people, you should not curse. I'll be dying. If your father was a dying, was, was a, a, rib, a, bit, a bit of a... That's what the rub is. That's what you got smicha, that you become a dyer. I see. Hari Elohim, los kala. He comes under the generalization of Elohim, you should not curse. And if his father was, a, a, was a leader, leader in the Nazi. Jewish yeah. he comes under the classification, the generalization of the per, uh, phraseology of the last part of the posting. He will all die, will all nasi, minayim. What if he's neither a, a, a leader among the people? Yeah. How do we know? That you're warned, caution against cursing him. Yeah, yeah. Cursing, who is him now? Anybody? The father. Or father. The father. Okay. Yeah. I want to know. The father. Yeah. Who happens to be? Okay, yeah. go on. No, that's neither of okay, that. Yeah, yeah, just right. the regular father. Now here's the punchline. This is where we're learning Binyanov. I told Don Binyanov, Michel, you learn out a building up of a general rule from both of these cases. I don't see how, but... Uh, how? Uh, ben, you know, this is the third principle we're talking about, how we interpret that you build up a general rule. Yes. That's it. Lo. The, uh, what you have to do in relation to a... To a uh, Rabbinic. Uh, to a leader of Jewish people is not the same thing, not the same uh, responsibility you have that you have to a... A, a diet, a, a rabbinical diet. judge has yes. more weight. No, than no, a, there are two, there are two things. We will learn. Yes, we will learn. In the case of a diet, you have to respect his decisions. In the case of, of a of, leader, a leader, you must show him a proper respect. I mean, what were you? No, see. Now we're going to we're going to explain. Neither can you compare the case of a judge 
the case of a leader, what's different? Uh, is a dying different than a gospel. You are commanded by the Torah that you should listen to his decision of Allah. A person accept your decision. A person is required to accept the decision of a, a proper yeah. and he's got smicha yeah. and he's a mentor yeah. and he is deciding the question you are required to accept, it and to accept it. his decision. Yeah. Or also, you are not commanded to accept the decision of he is not. You can a, argue with him. You can argue with him. You can, accept, you can uh, criticize you the authority to make a decision in this point because he is, he is not a judicial. Yeah. He is not, he's he's not, not qualified, qualified to, lead, to make that decision. Yeah. And on the other hand, Kuroi died. Neither can you compare a leader among the Jewish people to a diet, a, a question of a person that, uh, that's a judge, a rabbinical judge. Yeah. Why? Oh. You are required to show the proper uh, respect. respect to the authority of the thing. You are not permitted to rebel against the authority of the of, of the, the of the Nazi. Nazi. If a person a person rebelled against the king, still king David, respect. and he rebelled against it, he is guilty of a death penalty because he is rebelling against the it's like treason. But treason. that's a king. A Nazi is a Nazi of a tribe. We're talking about the king. A person in the position a Nazi. Of yes. Okay. Yeah. So we say oh. you cannot compare the two cases of, of a leader to a diet. Also, you are commanded to, show, uh, to accept the Roy Dyes. Like yeah. yeah, I'm, uh, I'm leading him astray. Yeah. Anyway. So you are not required to accept the, yeah. His, yeah. his authority in, in other matters. Yeah. He just questions, he just doesn't rule over you. Okay. I, yeah. That's how to show it to them. The thing in which they are comparable he to, Shaheen, the Abakon, they are among your people. In other words, they are uh, act, acting in a proper fashion among your people. In other words, they are applying the halacha in a proper way. They are acting as a nasi in a proper way. They are not uh, abusing their proper power. And, and they are both in your people. That means they are both doing the proper things. The dying is basking according to the halacha. He's not just one of these guys that has just gone and run rough shot on the halacha. He doesn't care less. <coughs> he's not. He's not. He's, he's applying the halacha the way it should be applied. He's using the proper principle. The separation of powers. That's, That's what right. it is. That's right. <laughs> Nothing is new in this world. <laughs> and and the Nazi is 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 is, 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 is not, He's not abusing the powers. He's living under law rather than under fire. Okay. and you therefore are warned. Not to curse them. Yeah. Either one of them, because yeah. each one is properly performing his function. Okay. Yeah, they administrate this. Sure. They have the judicial. Each one has a different function, and each one should be respected. You can't just go and uh, sure. they, uh, of course, funny. if they abuse their powers, that's something different. Okay. We're saying here, if they are in fact exercising uh, properly, and properly. Yeah, your people. Does the Nazi doesn't have any power? He has no power to interpret the law. He has the power to enforce the law. But so he wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for dying? Well, well they both need each other. They both need each other. You can't do one without the other. If the dying makes his decision, and nobody is What? Sure. Both. But they're not exercising the same function. But they're the same function there. All right, so I'm finding you. Alvi, Alvi. I also bring the case of Alvicho, of your father. Sheva Amacho, he's among your people. He's doing the thing that he should yeah. be doing. Also, and you also are warned that you should not curse him. And we learned this out from a binyan of. The big third principle we're talking about. The binyan, we built up a general principle that since it's applicable to this and this, it also is applicable to, the, this is the example of binyan of. Do you understand that now, gentlemen? you understand how you build it up? Well, we could go further, but it's not necessary for our purposes. I just wanted you to give this principle. Do you have it? Or do we'll hold this point? Okay. Uh, All right. Last week we discussed the opinion of uh, the third principle of the thirteen principles that Rabbi Shmuel says the interpret uh, the Torah is is uh, interpreted by a general principle that's contained in one or two biblical uh, laws applicable to all related laws. I want to call your attention to certain pesukim we did quote, and when we quoted, we learned the Gemara said was talking about comparing okay. cursing of, of parents to the cursing of, of a Nazi and the cursing of, of a Dayan. 
and in all cases you learn a binyan all the general rule just like it's prohibited to curse a, a leader of the Jewish people if he's coming to conduct himself in a proper fashion and if a rabbinical judge is also conducting himself in a proper fashion that is of course they're conducting themselves in a proper fashion obviously if they're misusing their powers then they, they invite this type of uh, opinion about them but if they are acting properly the leader is entitled to certain deference to his authority and the also the diet and the same way a, a um, parent is also entitled to be treated with uh, certain respect. And we learn out certain generalizations because of that. Among the Sukkim we quoted was a posik at the end of Kedoshim. There's, there's a, a coming here. At the end of Kedoshim, we learned, we quoted a posik there that page 160, by page 160 in the Yoker, that's chapter 20, verse 27, Chofzai. And it's uh, this point that we discussed the uh, last time we were discussing these at uh, this point, uh, 160. So let's the Posik in Kadoshi, very last passage, in page 160, very last Chavzai, right on top there. Chavzai, see it? Yes. Isho, Isho, a man or a woman, she have a hem, if there is among them a person that it's also kinds of dead people or uh, witchcraft. That's Spirit. Stoning, when a stone, you're going to move bomb, you should stone them. The ban bomb. This, remember this ter terminology, the ban bomb is a key phrase to indicate that there's pen a penalty is stoning. We learn out from this posse. Now, if you're looking, Rashi gives us a few other things that we learn out from this particular passage. Uh, it says like this. Uh, if you look in the second column, three lines from the top. He ever have old. Right there, he ever have old that there be old Gomer, and furthermore, Khan here, no Abraham, Miso, here is talking about capital punishment by death, Bomala and above, Koras. And earlier, when we learned out that a person could be cut off before his time, that means that Koras occurs if a person dies before the age of 50, there's a possibility that God cut him off before his time, of course. Of course Obviously, that's not for us, but it could be for us if it occurs, if the death occurs before the age of 50. It's considered Mises, Mises with Shemayim, death from heaven, if he dies before the age of 60. But then again, it could be that he just doesn't have years. But it could be that uh, penalty. So now this is a general rule, and you should remember this. 80, with us raw, and proper warning, the skill of, it can, re it, it can result in a capital punishment case of stoning if a person has, prior to the time he does the action, that has a, a, a capital punishment case, uh, a penalty attached to it, he is warned. And there are witnesses that he was warned, there are witnesses at the actual occurrence of the action that he did. He ignored the warning, and he also he had witnesses at the warning, and he ignored it, and he did it. And it was also witnesses at the actual action. Now, ordinarily, it's very hard to find witnesses that you're warning him ahead of time, don't murder this person, and then he goes and does it in front of witnesses. Usually, uh, such violent types, they try to eliminate the witnesses, too. But let's assume that this has occurred, and if he has given all these things, and the proper circumstances, he could be found guilty of death penalty and be stoned to death. What if he doesn't amaze it intentionally below her straw? What if he does the same action? He murdered a person, but he wasn't warned ahead of time against murdering the person. Rashi tells us, he us. Then he, can, he will not be um, amenable to human tribunal to be put to death, but God will cut his life down short. He will, he could, he will die before his 50th birthday. In other words, the, the, the divine justice is never frustrated, even though many times human justice is frustrated because of lack of proper evidence. That does not mean that, that the world as well is in fact very greatly ruled by God. And if there is a failure of human justice, then the divine justice takes over. The Shogun Tom would have the same thing occurred. A person was an innocent type, and he was killed by another person, 
but the person that killed him did not intend to kill him. It was an, in, it was an accident, an unintentional killing. We call it the, in American jurisprudence, we, we don't call, no longer classify it as a murder, we call it manslaughter. Now, but if he does it unintentionally, the same thing, he takes a human life. But now, of course, the intent was not to take the human life. And the law, you should understand, takes into consideration the person's intent. It's not only the action the person does, but his intent when he did the action. Sometimes the person intends to do something that's perfectly all right. In this particular case, it's not right to take a life. Because he did not intend to take a life, Joe so he's also not amenable, he can't be put to death by, by stoning because he didn't intend to kill this person. What does he do to go and set it right with God? He has to bring a sin offering. And he used to bring a sin offering and ask God to forgive him. And so, in any other case, you'll find throughout the Torah, a case where a person is found to uh, be a possible death penalty case, where it says that also a person can be cut off before his time. This is the, the scenario. If a person has 80 months, he could be found to death by the human tribunal. Was killed. If he, he does it intentionally, but he does not have the proper warning, he can. He, he's only he's cut off by God for his 50th birthday. And if he does it unintentionally, then he has to bring proper chazal. This general rule you should understand. Now we also have. I'll call your attention to another uh, passage in uh, Shoftim. Uh, that would be the boring Shoftim, where it says you should have judges. That would be on page um, 136 in the Boring, the last chapter, Yud Zain in the Boring, and um, 136. You have 136. I got 136. Yeah, 130. maybe. Oh, wait, no, this is not where I want to call you. That's, excuse me. I, I, it's not there. It's right here. Yud, Yud, oh, somebody wants to come in. Yeah. They probably locked it, but uh, you hear it. Look who's here. We just started. So, what happened to Harry? Oh, uh, <laughs> we, we gain one, we lose one. <laughs> or well, you just start every just start. Um, 15 minutes later than I expected. Sure. Don't worry about it. That's, that's about Dragon. We are, we discuss, you build up a general principle and you learn other things out from yeah. all related laws. We have just discussed now, before you came, yeah. uh, the last post in Kedoshi talks about that you shouldn't, a woman, a man or a woman should not go and consult with a um, person that consults the dead yeah, or uh, yeah. magic, uh, put, the dead, put the dead by stoning. Yeah. And there we learn out the general rule in the Rashi was telling us that if a person has the proper witnesses and the warning, he can put the death uh, by sto uh, stoning, death penalty. If, when, if, for instance, he did not, he did it intentionally, but did not have the proper warning, all he, uh, he is, he did it intentionally, that proper warning, he cannot put the death by the human tribunal, but God, God makes sure that justice is done and that he, his life is cut off before his 50th birthday by Korah. And if he did it unintentionally, then of course it's no longer murdered, like we call it manslaughter in American terminology. And such terms. And now I'm calling your attention to a posik in Shoftim, in the Devorim Yutes, but that's page 140 in the Devorim. Page 140 in the Devorim. All right, chapter 19 of Posik. Which is 15. 15. 15. Verse 15. This is the rule I, I referred to last time we were discussing this subject, that in American Jewish prudence, uh, one witness would be sufficient. Of course, that is not, many uh, judges will not accept one witness, but in the, let's put it, in, non in the non-Jewish non -Jewish world, world, one witness is sufficient to establish a matter, whereas uh, according to the Torah law, you have to have two witnesses to establish... Even in slight matters, in misdemeanor matters? Well, even a more... A more, you, more you, and in misdemeanor, would you still need two witnesses? Well, we have a general rule, I'll teach no, no matter... Yeah, you have now the posting that I've been quoting you all the time. Right. And the testimony of two witnesses thing is established. So I'm reading to you now this posting. We discussed it, but I never quoted you the posting. So I want you to see the posting. I don't want you to think that I made yeah, it up. Here. You made it up. <laughs> you might read it when you're at it. Lo yokom eid, but ish lochem 
ucho hatos, ucho chet, asher yecheto, al pi shene edim, o al pi shalosha edim. All right. One witness shall not stand up against the person for any sin, or for any any transgression, or any sin, or, or any type of a sin that he may sin, on the testimony of two witnesses, or on the testimony of three witnesses, a thing shall be established. What's the necessity to say three witnesses when you've already said two? That's a very good question. Well, it's even stronger. Two is strong, three is stronger. That's all. <laughs> No, the truth, the truth is, what if it happens that you have, instead of two witnesses coming to testify, three show up? What are you going to say? Now, that's a question you here. You have to qualify no, each no, no. one of them. Maybe more, you've you got to be a kosher person, you got to be a reliable type, you can't be a person that <laughs> in any way they suspect you of a person playing yeah, uh, tricky, past, tricky with the, with the yeah. truth, and you're a really solid type of citizen. And you have three solid type citizens coming up and they're all prepared to testify. Uh -huh. And they all tell similar stories, bringing out this thing. This is, the Gomorrah talks about this, that this is in, this is in question, say for instance, if you want to uh, contradict the witnesses and say that in fact they are telling a lie. So you bring a uh, testimony that will contradict their testimony, you refute their testimony. Now, if you refute the testimony only of two of those witnesses, you have not yet refuted the testimony of the entire group. Because if there happens to be more than two, two is the minimum requirement. Uh -huh. But there happens to be more than two and you want to refute their testimony, you got to testify you were there at, at the state in Madison yeah. Street when you were at the same time over with us in Lincolnwood. You said, but two of them, but the third one was, uh, says I was there too. You haven't conject, uh, contradicted his statement. In other words, you got to completely, up uh, before the second set of witnesses, it would be, to be determined to be lying witnesses and they should be punished for what they intended to inflict upon the person by their perjury. You get it? Yeah. So that's why I say... Uh, and they get the same punishment that yeah. they intended to inflict yeah. upon the yeah. individual by yeah, their perjury. Yeah, that's all. It's called a they're, they're, they're deserving. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is that? All right. All right uh, let's look in the Rashi. Test ball. But they're halfway down in the first column. Eight effort. And Rashi says, Ze bono of. Remember, did you ever hear that terminology, bono of? Yeah. This is a binion no. of. We're talking about a binion of. Binion this was the, about the third principle we're saying. This uh -huh. is a building binion up of. of a general principle. Uh -huh. This is a general, oh. a beginning of a, a building oh. of a principle. Holy. Every time it mentions the word Witness. Shabbat Torah, in the Torah. It means Schneim, it means two witnesses, even though it says Ooh. just one. A bon, from Bonoov, from the principle of interpreting the Torah, every time it says witness alone, means two. Means, means it two. means two. Unless... Because it's not a good... Because one good is not adequate. Yeah, but, uh, one is not adequate. So you it need two be, just to have some... Witness until it, it is a minimum requirement of two. Okay, good. There Bonoov, O H, if a Torah, Schneim is two, L E K. Unless it is, it, it, it specifies that it is a echot, the second word uh -huh. of echot, uh -huh. a. If it just said a, you would think it would be two witnesses. You, when it you, when adds you, the word echot. echot the, the, bin, the, the meaning of two. Yes. So I just want to show you where, again, the same principle uh, operates. And it operates in many places. So don't be upset all of a sudden you say, it says one, a, yeah, but, sure. why I do you see that? Since we have this general rule oh, that you got to have two, the, the, the call it when you designate it as a, yes. as with a, we we say it means that the Torah is telling you it really means eidus, the the required minimum requirement for testimony. See, I just wanted to repeat a different case. Any more, Rashi? No. All right. Uh, incidentally, I'll, I'll call your attention to it a little further down. Yeah. Um, testimony of two witnesses in Gittin. Here in Gittin, no, I know. Loshia Kosfu a dosom You shouldn't, uh, it is not proper to bring testimony that's written down in a, a person can't show up in the Bezdi. Yeah, can't be there. Can't be in the Bezdi. Yeah. Just to write out his version of the story yeah. and send it to the Bezdi is not sufficient. You don't have any time. I want you to know that the Talmud, we think principles, 
You have to say That's right. I, I, I want you to know where it comes from. Right. You show us the best thing. It's not that you can yeah. write their testimony on a letter and send it to the best thing. That wouldn't be sufficient. Yeah. Lo, she amos targum, and neither can you set up in the time of the, of the Sanhedrin, you couldn't even send up an interpreter between the judge and the, te- and the witnesses. The judge had to understand the language of the witnesses. Is that because so? a lot of times, That's unfortunately, why, interpreters hmm. don't interpret this correctly. That's why the judges had to know many languages. They you had to learn 70 language. languages to be a, a, a so Sanhedrin. Otherwise, they, you, 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 it's just murder a lot of times. There is misinterpretation, uh-huh. Not, it, unintentionally, even yeah, in real conventions. Yeah. That's why in our courts today, a lawyer knows if the other side has an interpreter, he brings his own interpreter to make yeah. sure that interpreter yeah. is not, not, it's it's not messing it up. <laughs> Unfortunately, you see, see, it would be wonderful if the judges knew all the languages, uh-huh. there would be no problem. <laughs> so that is the condition. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure. I know they I, had to know many languages, but you say 70 languages yes, they had to know? I thought it was like 13. All right, go ahead. Yeah, about our group, I don't. They know eight of them being not dionic between the witnesses mm-hmm. and the judges. The judges, in other words, had to understand the law. All the judges, okay. Yeah. Right. I, I had a case. I had a case. I had a case uh, recently. Next week I'll have a case. Oh, okay. You're my yeah, client. Yeah, yeah. We've got five. And I had a case recently where I was representing a, a, uh, a woman in regards to uh, the state, and there was the neighbor state where the, uh, the, uh, the, the stepdaughter was trying to box her out of everything. And she had invested, kept her sister alive. I won't mention any names or anything, uh, but uh, kept her sister alive, and she had expended on her own expenditures uh, up to about $15,000, whereas the stepdaughter had spent the dime. So not only she didn't want to give her any of the money of the estate, she didn't want to be reimbursed. Uh, the anniversary with that. So I had the responsibility to try to upstep documents that the, all through the years the stepdaughter had forced uh, yeah. uh, And that's very difficult to do, especially after many years had passed by, to go and prove there was some kind of a fraud or anything like that. It's a very difficult case, and under all circumstances, it could be very difficult to, uh, to do it. So I came and uh, I come in this court, and he looks at the case. He says, what's that? Uh, he's got a lot of Jewish He's friends. a Jewish guy, and no, he's, he's a Polish. Yeah, he's raised by Jewish people. I found out later he's raised by Jewish people. <laughs> I just wanted to know how I practice law. Yeah. We went in his chambers. He took out a keyboard. He put out a keyboard. There are pairs. And uh, make the short story story. Yeah. So, so I got her for $15,000. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How I got it, that's another thing. But the fact is, I maneuvered it around. It was actually mommage from nothing. Uh, all the documents were on the uh, other side. No proof for anything. But that was with his help, of course. Uh, so, uh, see, when he could speak the Mama Russian, you could speak the language. It, 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 you know, and you have a witness come up there and they yes, I, And sometimes there's a misinterpretation, not intentionally. There's not even an intention of misinterpretation. And they lose sight of the fact. I had a. I had another case. Excuse me for telling you. His nephew married a Jewish girl. Yeah. Oh, I mean, no, his niece married a Jewish girl. Well, it's a claim of a... Right. right. Whatever it is. Yeah. At any rate, there was, there was, I was representing a gentleman. He had a very unusual name, something like that. A very unusual name. It's a Yugoslava name. My client was charged breaking into somebody else's apartment and stealing the contents of the apartment. And they had a witness <coughs> to testify that... That, that, that in, it, it was in the pleading that said that he broke into the apartment and that he's suing him. The, the man that the owned, owned, the, owned the thing, you think he saw, Jan, Jan, what, what his name was, uh, breaking into the apartment. So, I mean, right there, he sing. So the, his, the attorney for the other side uh, is suing, he said, you saw the young brother was breaking into the apartment? Yes, yes, yes. So then, he would think, how many young people? So I, I come and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a witness then. I ask him, cross examine, and I says, Is this the Yon, Yonovich that broke in the apartment? No. No, nope. different guy. <laughs> it turns out Yonovich is like John Smith. Uh-huh. You see, if you didn't know 
that John Smith, in uh, an ordinary car name, yeah. you would think, well, the how can there possibly be more than one yard? As a matter of fact, don't jump to conclusions, whatever it is. You don't jump to a conclusion by which uh, it appears on the surface to be a uh, thing. All right, uh, yeah. okay, but uh, you understand now the concept of opinion of now, without yeah, question. I hope so. Yeah, but you understand, right. we learned out uh, the main uh, domain bomb, that the word domain bomb means that this, it, this is a trigger right. for uh, a bit of a bomb. Oh, for a uh, skilo, yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. stoning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's see. We go up to the next principle, number four. When the generalization is followed by a specification only, what a specified implies. Okay. Yes. I said that very seems very simple. simple. Yes, it is. It, it seems very simple. Seems. Simplifies it. That's that firm bomb. All right. Read, read the example. Read it. In Leviticus 18:6. 18 means the chapter 18, verse 6. Yeah. The law reads, "None of you shall marry anyone." related to him. This generalization is a followed by a specification of forbidden marriages. Hence, this prohibition applies only to those expressly mentioned. See, if you make a generalization, yeah. nobody should marry anyone related to him, and truthfully speaking, we're all related to everybody else. Sure. If you go back to all of my region, all human yeah. beings are related yeah. to everybody yeah. else. That means we're boxed out of marrying anybody. Yeah. So comes the passage afterwards is a series of, of types of uh, marriages that you cannot go on marriage. So when we say we have a thought, a generalization, and a prop, the specification, the fact that the generalization is followed, followed by the prop, the generalization only covers the areas that it's specified. That are mentioned. And you're not permitted to go and put in anything extra no, in no. that because otherwise it, 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 it becomes too, uh, too broad. And uh -huh, really. so he says like this, if in a biblical passage, a general rule or word is followed by specific terms, <clears throat> the law applies only to the specific. The reason being that specific words are considered merely an explanation, expla explanatory of the general term. All right, that's uh, rule number four. All right, let's go to rule number five. Let's see if there's anything uh, difficult about understanding that concept. All right. When a specification is followed by a generalization, all that is implied in the generalization applies. Now, this is different. All right, now let's look at the Here's line. where the generalization... First, we start off with a specification. Yeah. And then we have... Five in Exodus 22, chapter 22, 11, 9. We read, if a man gives to his neighbor an ass or donkey or an ox, or a sheep or to keep, or any animal, and it dies, it's already in the handle. Yeah. The general phase, any animal which follows the specification includes in this in this law all kinds of animals. Show you up. Yeah, I'm showing that much I know it's involved in okay. the very big. <laughs> if you got it, you flopped it. You know, he specifies uh, three, uh, three different types of yeah, animals, but all of a sudden it makes a generalization a of any and he includes them. So that uh -huh. means all kinds. Because once you have broadened it, opened up the field, it includes everything. So he says like this. It's an animal that's... In a passage, a general term follows specific terms. The law applies to the general. That is, to everything included in it, mentioned merely by way of exemplification. In other words, these are just examples, but it doesn't mean to exclude any broader thing. So therefore, it broadens it. Now, so let's, what's the difference now between Mikhail Laprat and Mikhail Number four and number five. One yeah. excludes by specifying after the generation. Oh, and, and, the other it limits it. and the other limits Once you start a, a generalization and then you limit it, it is limited to the to limitation. what the limitation is. Once you start a, a step, yeah. and that's good to understand yeah. in case you come to anything like that. Tonight, what? By Myra, we say... But this is very um, unusual. Most of the things that we say during the Jewish calendar follow the lunar, says, a lunar calendar. This follows the solar calendar. This comes exactly 60 days after the beginning of the uh, autumn equinox. equinox. And so therefore, in, uh, that's, it, it, we find it necessary from time to uh, adjust, have, start uh, adjust the, the lunar calendar to adjust to the solar calendar so we don't get, uh, get it. 
in the orange, you don't have different right. you gave him in the wrong yeah. season. Yeah. The sukkah's yeah. got to be in the fall, fall. And, if, and if you don't adjust this before you got yeah. you all messed Mace up. Right. Unless right. you go to Australia and there. Right. Is, right. right now, uh, I got for the next principle, number six. Well, neither Gamora but Matthias that you mentioned. Well, it, it, this ain't going to last forever, I know that. What? Uh, <laughs> just because we went through two of them today, I know we're going to hit one that's going to take a couple I'm yeah. sure you get all kinds. I don't know if it's Michelle just too. Yeah. The only thing, I have a feeling that, that certain Nusachim, maybe some of them start by Mimica, some of them maybe. No, I have to inquire. Mimica. I think he knows well, Mimica. I'm sure by Meyer is no question. But whether the Ari or the start different or start, that I have to find out. But uh, uh, already right Yeah, not, I didn't you have, have a shot. chance for Mintha. All right. That means, since I didn't dive in Mintha, <laughs> when I dive in twice, I have to say Talmud or twice? Absolutely. Okay. When you go and make up a fila, a fila of According a to the time itself, yeah. Even though you missed the previous. <laughs> Here I was more in the rabbi study. Okay. Now let's go to the fifth principle. Oh, and hold on, I'm making progression. All right. All right, would you read that stuff? If a generalization is followed by a specification, and this in turn by a generalization, oh. one must be guided by what the specification implies. Oh, now well, you have this uh, tau, <coughs> a prop, tau. You have a generalization. And in the middle of its specification, and then, and then another generalization. All in one sentence, or it could be one, in, one sentence, two or three <coughs> sentences. Could be in the sentence, okay. but it's right in order, one in order. Okay. So now you have this is a, this is a very thing. It's not getting a little more complicated. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, the, All right. Look in three, uh, six. All right. We'll give the example. Next is this twenty chapter twenty-two sentence eight. We are told that an embezzler shall pay double to his neighbor for anything embezzled. Which That's is a general generalization list. for ox or ass or sheep or clothing, which is a specification, or any article lost, 